welcome to the Bruce Channel. I'm Bruce, and I'm once again honored that you've elected to spend a very precious currency with us, and I'm talking about these next several minutes. Each one is an irreplaceable part of your life, so thank you. We'll try and make your investment one you're pleased to have made. So first, have you picked up your corned beef and cabbage? I'm ready. There is no Irish blood in me, but I enjoy holidays that come with a particular culinary delight associated with them, and probably the most firmly embedded is Thanksgiving. Probably obvious, too, but I love turkey, so that one's just an extra bonus. Now, I'm not from the South originally, but I have adopted ham and greens and black-eyed peas for New Year's Day. I quite like the mix. The ham, of course, is traditional nearly everywhere, but black-eyed peas are for good luck through the year. If you're really into it, you eat 365. And the greens, typically collard greens, but mustard and turnip greens are nearly equal partners and therefore affluence to keep the green coming. But on Tuesday, lots of folks will have corned beef and cabbage. And I'll be among them. All over the country, bars and restaurants will be serving green beer. Cracker Barrel even started promoting their corned beef and cabbage special midweek, last week. Wednesday or Thursday, I think. New York, of course, will have the biggest parade, but Savannah, Georgia, may enjoy the second biggest civic celebration in this country. They even dye the Savannah River green. Not going to go far with the weather, and I wouldn't at all, except I saw something unique, at least unique in my experience. Now, apropos for March, it, a week ago, two weeks ago, actually, it was a roller coaster. Wet, chilly Monday, foggy Tuesday. It was like 74 on Wednesday, but then Thursday was chilly and rainy again. And the lows into Friday were forecast to be around 20. Big cold air mass was on the heels of the rain, and yeah, some were worried about black ice. Well, the rain ended a bit before the big cold arrived, but the approaching air mass made for big winds and a fast drop in temperature. So a little puddle in my backyard was blown around, buffeted by the wind, and yet quickly froze, sort of sort of like searing your steak, except in reverse. And it created this. Now last year, I'd have seen that and thought, wow. Now I see it and think, wow, I'll have to show it. Here, in about a week, maybe two, the Bradford pears will be fully in bloom, and they are beautiful. I'll show you pictures. If you're not familiar with them, think cherry blossoms in D.C., except the Bradford pears are white. Lots of people have been looking forward, millions of people, literally, to tonight. This afternoon, most of the college basketball conferences will hold their championships, the tournaments, and then the selection committee will announce who's been invited to the big dance. Now, the thing about the NCAA basketball tournament, even if your team is bad, you can play your way into the NCAA tournament by winning your conference championship tournament. Yeah, that's rare, but it can happen. But tonight, the teams, their seedings, their brackets will be announced. Now, over the next several weeks, yeah, I'll probably watch a few games, or at least parts of some games. This is basketball country, remember. People will take off, literally, they'll use vacation days for Thursday and Friday. And, you know, I know some diehard fans won't like to admit it, really, but everything in basketball comes down to the last couple of minutes. And even that's if it's close enough. I'll probably watch some, but I may not pay a lot of attention. At least not after my first loss in this year's $1 million challenge. Last year that was a billion dollar challenge. And last year I learned a bit too late to try. Anyway, basketball, hmm, what it's become doesn't do so much for me. Here's why. As you may know, I'm not, I'm not tall, but I play golf. As a kid I played basketball, football, baseball. Now, when I played football, it wasn't against 300-pounders, it was against the neighborhood kids. So I blocked or ran or passed or caught against neighborhood kids. When I watch college or pro football, I understand the game they're playing. They're competing, after all, against guys their own size. So, same with baseball. Great game. I could feel I could swing a bat. I watched the pros, and they're playing a game that I've played. I played basketball. Dribble, dribble, shoot, pass. I can watch a good high school game with running and ball handling and shooting and good defense, and I, I get that game, too. 
But basketball played at the highest levels today, that's not a pun, but <laughs> could have been. When James Naismith invented the game, the hoop was way up there. Same place it is now, but you had to shoot it. You had to shoot it up. Now, I don't want to take away from the athleticism of today's players, but honestly, <laughs> they just don't play a game with which I am familiar. I shoot the ball up. I watch them fly through the air and throw the ball down, toward the basket, down. So it's just not a game I ever played. Hey, let me tell you about my book, Shrink. Or wait, I can let others do it. Welcome back. Remember the various episodes of the Bruce Channel are all available for viewing at tinyurl.com slash Bruce Channel and also at the Facebook page, The Bruce, no space, The Bruce Channel. Be sure to like us, to share, and to tell your friends. And you can write to us at the Bruce Channel at yahoo.com. Okay, so a few days ago, on March 11th, a new novel hit the marketplace it is called A Questionable Cure by Roger Gerald Scott. And I repeat, it's a novel, a work of fiction. Without giving away any plot secrets, it's the story of a researcher trying to find a cure for cancer amid many obstacles. To assemble the story, Mr. Scott obviously spent many, many hours of research so as to better understand how the body works, how it deals with disease and how research is conducted, and how oncologists treat cancer. Now, I've read it. Actually, full disclosure, I'm one of the book's editors. I can say this, my personal belief is that he has hit the nail on the head with matters like um, how members of the FDA, that is those whose job it is to rule on the merits and safety of various drugs and their availability in America, how some of them often end up at the end of their term accepting fabulously well-paying jobs with the companies whose drugs they recently ruled on. I'd encourage you to read another book too, although it's not fiction. Not a novel, it's called The Truth About Drug Companies, How They Deceive Us, and What to Do About It. It was written by Marsha Angel, MD. Dr. Angel was the first woman to become an editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine. I've read the book, and it's been a few years. But I do recall her shining a spotlight on the very conflicts of interest Mr. Scott describes in his novel. I encourage you to read the book. Read both books. <laughs> but understand if you do, they're not likely to make you crack up laughing. But ultimately, just keep this in mind. The FDA is a part of the federal government and is thus funded by the funding authority, the U.S. Congress. And after it's all said and done, we have the best government money can buy. I just mentioned the FDA, and aside from regulating foods, think meat inspections and drugs, think pharmaceuticals, the FDA also regulates food supplements. But the regulations are much broader for them, and much easier to duck. The biggest difference, however, is that there is no prior approval required before selling your stuff, which means as we've seen for years, lots of claims can be made. If they aren't blatantly false, like, eat this, it will regrow all the hair on your head, it can be years before anyone in regulatory notices it's more than just a bit of truth stretching. And usually by then, lots of money has been made and any fines really don't dissuade. 
I mean, if you've made 40 million and are fined 4 million, that's just a cost of doing business and a pretty good trade. We've all seen the infomercials, and some of them are laughable, except many of us are so gullible, it's more likely to, well, for me, it more likely to make me cry rather than laugh. Decades ago, I saw a young kid. He was 23, but he looked to be maybe 17. And in this infomercial, he claimed that he and his wife were making lots of money with 900 numbers. A few years later, the same guy said tiny classified ads had made him rich. No mention of the 900 numbers. Fast forward a decade or two, and now he was pitching the greatest vitamin in the world, which could maybe cure diabetes, stroke, heart disease, insomnia, cancer, liver disease, arthritis. <laughs> and not only could you become healthy with this stuff, but by becoming a dealer and setting up multi-level marketing, you could also become rich, woohoo, healthy and rich. He was so over the top that he was finally indicted by a federal grand jury in Phoenix, June 2011. He was charged with bilking almost $52 million from more than 220,000 victims. Well, they missed his arraignment, so a warrant for his arrest was issued. He was arrested less than a week later. And then in October of that same year, while in prison, awaiting trial, Don LaPre killed himself. What a punk. Another infomercial guy who's pitched myriad products and who is still on some now and again is Kevin Trudeau. He sold stuff to make your memory virtually photographic. He and a chemist, Bob Barefoot, appeared together extolling coral calcium, even claiming that it cured Parkinson's disease. If I recall correctly, it's at one point, one of them looked on the camera and said, if you know how to reach Michael J. Fox, who has Parkinson's disease, please get him this information. But he's best known for his what they don't want you to know books. That's partly because those previous claims formed the basis for him being given a lifetime ban from selling anything except his books. There is, after all, a First Amendment. And in these, they were likely to find secrets like the FDA and Big Pharma were more interested in selling drugs than in curing disease. And you know what? Some of that is what Dr. Angel wrote about in her book. But he got in trouble somehow. And he was fined, but he failed to pay the fine, and after court appearances, he was convicted of criminal contempt and sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. His scheduled release is July of 2022. Which is why I have to laugh when I see his infomercials still on the air. One more infomercial I want to talk about, and it's a current one called Smart Medicine. It's for a daily drink called Supple, and if you watch the infomercial, you'll be hard-pressed not to come away thinking that it can cure everything, your joint pain, that it will help your body rebuild the cartilage you've lost over the years. So it's amazing when in the final credits, a graphic using very small print, so small it's very hard to read even in HD, it takes back virtually everything they have said. Who are they? Well, one is the host. Monita Pujal, M.D., and her guest, Peter Apatow, and he is the Supple Company CEO. And, yeah, there's a host of testimonials all saying, it's great, I don't hurt anymore, and, yeah, it's hallelujah. At the end, Dr. Pujal says, If you call right now, you can receive a substantial introductory discount off the new, more powerful Supple. You've heard from real people who've experienced incredible results from Supple, and now you can, too. Well, five things I was able to find out. Number one, <laughs> a regular order is 24 cans, but if you order 48, you'll save. Now, keep that in mind. I read an online review. It was written by the customer's daughter. The mother used it for several weeks and didn't see results. Called and then was told by the customer service rep that in some cases, it can take longer. So keep taking it, and she did, and then finally wanted her refund, but that guarantee is only good for 30 days from receipt. Keep trying. It takes longer in some people. Mm -hmm. Two points made by a different reviewer. One, shipping it back for a refund is on your dime, and two, they only refund unused, if that's true. 
it's a pretty useless guarantee. Now, it's easy to understand why people would buy this stuff or anything else like it. When you are in pain, you just want it to stop. And you'll eat almonds, or sandpaper, or safflower, or calcium chloride, or scarab beetles if you're desperate enough. Anything someone tells you will help. My mother lost a cartilage in one knee, and it made getting around horribly difficult. I understand. At least she didn't fall for this, but had she, I'd have understood. And some of these things may actually work, or they may seem to work. But that's why there are double-blind studies. How much of that seeming to work is due to the placebo effect? Oh, I mentioned there were five things. <laughs> Number five. Nowhere that I found in the infomercial, nor in the tiny print, nor ever in their conversation, do we learn that Dr. Monita Podiel and her guest, Peter Apatow, are um, married to each other. Just over 90 years ago, then Vice President Calvin Coolidge said, the chief business of the American people is business. Well, despite what some would say, business does have to be regulated. Even though it is, oftentimes American business still tries to get away with it all that they can. In Atlas Shrugged, Ayn Rand characterized her industrialist heroes as noble. There are such. There are the opposite of such also. Regulating them, investigating, and prosecuting them is part of why we pay taxes. Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., a Republican, said, Taxes are what we pay for a civilized society. I'm willing to pay. I like civilized society. Although, Given the rhetoric flying around, sometimes it does seem less civil than ever. An example of the opposite, no taxes, Somalia. Smart man, Holmes. And that's it for this week, but I hope your upcoming week is the best you've ever had.